Investors are losing out on hundreds of billions of dollars as dividend paying companies cut or suspend their payments this year, but you don't have to be one of them. There are actually companies still growing their dividends to put more cash in your pocket. In this video, I'll show you a simple screener to find dividend growth stocks, then reveal the five best dividend stocks to watch for that cash payday. We're talking dividend growth investing today on Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to all you in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, more than 770 companies have already cut or paused their dividends this year, with 63 of those in the S&P 500 index. That's the most since 2009 and more are expected through the rest of this year more than $100 billion in dividends that you won't be able to count on this year. And it's at times like this that focusing on those companies that are not only able to sustain their dividend but grow it becomes so much more powerful. Any company that can grow its dividend payment in this environment needs to be on your radar. So in this video, I'm screening for some of the best dividend growth stocks to buy. I'll show you a screen for uncovering dividend stocks that are not only growing their dividends but also sales and earnings. I'll then reveal the five dividend growth stocks to watch and price targets for each. Now for the video, I'm gonna be using a different definition of dividend growth than you might be used to seeing. Usually dividend growth stocks are just those with a history of increasing their dividend. So you're gonna get a lot of stocks from the dividend aristocrats list or others like it. But here I wanna broaden that into companies with that overall growth and fundamentals like sales and earnings as well. This is not only going to make sure that you find those stocks with that commitment to shareholder cash return, but also those with that certainty around the stock price return as well as the dividend. For this, I'll be using the StockCard.io platform to find and research these stocks. Besides some of the investing tools that we'll use today, StockCard makes it really easy to analyze a stock because it takes all the financial measures like this quick ratio, the debt to equity, and then puts them into these easy to understand levels for growth potential, operations, and valuation. In fact, I'll be sharing the stock screen that I use in this video through a link in the video description below. Click through the link and you can save that dividend growth screener and dig deeper into these stocks. Our first dividend growth pick here is Bancorp South Bank, ticker BXS, a regional bank across eight states with 300 branches. Now, all the banks have been slammed hard this year, first on those lower interest rates and then after the Fed stress test in June. Basically, the Fed came out and limited how much banks could pay out as dividends or their repurchase programs depending on their earnings, and the central bank was brutal on this. It was around this time that you saw a lot of those other banks like Wells Fargo cut their dividends, but not Bancorp South. Now, if you scroll down, you see the earnings and dividend related dates section here, but I wanna scroll down a little further to the dividend information. This shows the shares pay a 3.5% dividend and have increased it by more than 14% over the last year. Better here is the fact that it's only paying out 38% of earnings to cover that dividend, so some potential here to increase the payment without hurting that growth or cash flow. Bancor South reported loan growth of 13% in the second quarter and has doubled its loan loss provisions account to $240 million this year. Now, if you remember from our previous video on bank stocks, we talked about that loan loss account, what the banks are doing here. This is a cash reserves account that the banks are holding just in case those loan defaults start to creep up. Now, all the banks have shifted billions of dollars of their earnings into these accounts, and that's where the earnings trouble and those lower dividends is coming from. But if the economy recovers like I think it will, and we don't see that level of loan defaults that the banks are preparing for, a bank like Bancor South will have roughly $120 million in additional cash to move back into earnings and pay out a lot of it as dividend growth. Shares of BXS trade for a price to book value of just 0.83 times, which is well below the industry average. And the average analyst target here is around $24 per share. So potentially a 20% upside to this one besides that dividend yield. Next here is weight loss and management leader Medifast, ticker MED, and it's 2.6% dividend yield. Medifast works through a coaching model with more than 32,000 representatives across the United States that offer services and then sell the company's subscription-based meal plans. It's a solid approach because not only does it motivate those area coaches, but it produces that consistently rising sales trend through those subscriptions. And sales have grown at a 37% annualized rate over the last three years, with the company expecting to book a 22% increase even this year. So the pandemic has slowed those sales a little, but it's still an impressive growth rate. Metafest has turned that growth into a three-year dividend growth rate of 46%, which is absolutely huge. The payout ratio is a little high for a consumer discretionary company, but the growth is there, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
Analysts have an average price target of 193 per share, which is about 10% higher from here, though some of those valuation measures like the price to sales and the PE ratio do look a little stretched. We've still got three more dividend growth names, but I wanna show you how I found these. And in fact, I'll be sharing the screener with the link in the description. To start with a list of dividend stocks, I went to the filter tab in StockCard. The platform enables you to name your screeners and, and even share them with a link, which I'll do. So I'll call this one dividend growth stocks. And I'll start by checking this box for companies with strong dividend paying status. Now, the cool thing about StockCard is that it boils down a lot of those financial ratios, a lot of the fundamentals that we talk about here on the channel into these easy to understand levels. So instead of having to research through, through the dividend yield, the payout ratio, and the annual dividend growth, StockCard does the work for you by taking all three of these and then assigning the stock one of these three levels, good, neutral, or bad. So we filter these for good dividend payers, but that still leaves us with over a thousand stock picks. So, so let's narrow these down a little bit with this good sales growth metrics and maybe cash availability for those dividend stocks that could increase their payouts. And you see that narrows the list to about 80 stocks, a much smaller group that we can then dig into deeper to find the ones we really like. Next on our dividends growth list is Tractor Supply, ticker TSCO, and a 1.2% dividend yield. Tractor Supply operates the largest retail farm and ranch stores in the U.S. with nearly 1,900 stores in 49 states and then also 180 pets in stores. Now, these are all retail customers. Only about 10% of the customers are those full-time ranchers and farmers. And this could be a breakaway market this year as people look for more things to do while they're at home. Now, the fundamentals here are solid, even if that dividend is a little low. But the reason this is my favorite isn't because of the stock, but have you been inside of these stores? It is like hillbilly heaven in here. Seriously though, check out one of these stores and you will be hooked forever. Sales were up 35% last quarter when everything else retail was just nosediving. The company expects to book 19% revenue growth for the year and it's growing the dividend by 14% annually over the last three years. Here again, also a super low payout ratio, just 24% of earnings going to meet that dividend, which leaves plenty of room for investing back into the company and growing that cash payment. Analysts have an average price target of around $153 per share, which is about 9% higher, though I think this one is priced cheaply, and it's one of the few good models for retail stores. Next here is one of the big winners for the year, the world's largest gold producer, Newmont, ticker NEM, and its 1.5% dividend yield. Now, even with the dividend growth that we'll look at, the payment just hasn't kept up with the price on this one, and, and that's where you get that 1.5% dividend yield. In fact, I've had Newmont in an IRA account for just over a year with a 95% return, so not too worried about that low yield. Even after the run in gold prices, though, there are a lot of reasons to be bullish. The company had 16% of its production shut down earlier in the year, but is now up to full operations. Management is expecting an all-in sustaining cost of $900 per ounce for the next year. That's down from $975 this year, and costs are expected to fall further through 2023. Newmont is still working through those merger benefits with its Gold Corp add-on last year, and with the gold at $2,000 an ounce or higher, this one will continue to cash flow and pay out those dividends. The payout ratio here is under 14%, and I would put good odds on a special dividend being declared sometime this year or next. Even though the dividend hasn't quite caught up with that share price, that 64% annualized growth over the last three years isn't bad either. Analysts have the shares up about 11% over the next year to just under $75 a share, and I think this one could be a good long-term stock with that safety exposure to gold. We'll get back to that list, but I wanted to point out one other feature for finding stocks on StockCard, something that I just found out this week. Besides being able to look up those individual stocks with the search bar here, you can also search for investing themes with keywords. For example, I can type in dividend here, and not only does the dropdown show me ETFs and funds with dividend in the name, but also these watch lists created like this one, Stocks for Dividend Seekers. Click through and I see over 100 dividend paying stocks that I can narrow down further in the screener. I really like this next dividend stock for that growth theme, Mantech International, ticker M-A-N-T, and it's 1.7% dividend yield. Mantic is in one of my favorite industries for growth. It's a critical provider of cyber, IT, and systems for the government sector, serving just about every defense and federal agency. The company has a great project pipeline of $20 billion plus and a $10 billion backlog that's grown 20% a year since 2016. Sales grew at a nearly 18% pace last quarter, well above the three-year rate of 11.5% and could be the start of a faster trend in revenue. And while this dividend growth rate has been a little slow at about 8.7% compared to these others on our list, the payout ratio is low and this is one of the most stable businesses for that cash certainty. 
Analysts have this one around 11% higher to $82 a share over the next year, and it's trading for under the sector average on a PE basis. Click on the video to the right for our dividend income portfolio, 20 stocks that will create cash flow every single day of the week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.